In this video, I am going to discuss about humanistic learning theories and its classroom implications. Humanistic learning theories give more value to the human beings by not considering his merely as a sophisticated mission or a victim of the conflict between the ego and id. It considers him as a purposeful being capable of adapting himself to his environment and choosing his own course of action in order to achieve the goals which he has selected for himself. These goals may be simple as a satisfaction of common physical need or lofty as the attainment of self-realization of personal fulfillment. These theories try to explain why and how do humans learn and the nature of mechanisms of learning. Humanistic psychology believes in the strength of potentiality of human beings. All the human beings have natural inclination for learning and desire to grow and progress is the philosophy of these persons. They emphasize distinctly human aspects of personality as the existing of free will and freedom of choice and man's research for unique goals and values to guide his behavior and to give personal meaning to his existence. Carl Rogers Experimental Learning Theory The theory of experimental learning has been proposed by Carl Rosen Rogers, an American psychologist. It has its origin in his views about psychotherapy and humanistic approach to psychology. It was primarily employed to explain the learning mechanism of adult learners and then was applied to adolescent and then school going learners also. In his search of basic nature of learning, Rogers tried to distinguish two types of learning, cognitive and experimental. He termed cognitive learning as a meaningless in itself unless it is subjected to someone's use. Such learning is knowledge based and thus may include the learning of vocabulary, multiplication table, mathematical formula, historical events and geographical facts. Experimental learning, on the other hand, is quite vital to one's progress and welfare because it is associated with the application of the acquired knowledge such as learning about engines in order to repair car, learning psychologist principles and methods in order to help the children to get rid of bad habits. Thus, experimental learning is learner-centered. That is to stay care for the needs and wants of the learners. Carl Rogers have tried to enumerate the qualities of experimental learning in the following way. Experimental learning is characteristic by personal involvement of the learner. It is self-initiated. That means the learner willingly has to take initiative to engage in such type of learning. It is characterized by self-evaluation. The learner himself is interested in evaluating the result of the outcome of such learning by applying it to the realization of learning objective. That is, he wants to test his knowledge and repairing an electrical gazette by actual doing the repair. It leaves a passive effect on the learners. Whatever is learned through his method can be made more into use which are where he needs. Rogers as a humanist believes the strength and potential of human being and he feels the role of the teacher and parents is that to help the children in their desire, inherent desire for personal change and growth. Teacher as well as the parents have to care for the facilitate such learning which help the children to grow and develop according to their requirements. He says that the primary responsibility of teachers lies well in that sincerity as a helper, guide and the facilitator in the ongoing teaching learning process. According to him, learning is well facilitated when threat to the self of learner is minimum, learning resources and climate are in the favor of the learner, the learner participates completely in the learning process and has control over its nature and direction. It is primarily based on direct confrontation with practical, social, personal or research area. Self-evaluation is the principal method of assessing progress or success. The learners realize the importance of learning and develop an openness as well as willingness to learn. Thus, experiential learning is in fact a learner-centered enterprise. Here, the learner is a key figure in ongoing teaching learning process. The role of the teacher is to facilitate such learning. Abraham Maslow's Humanistic Learning Theory Starting from the satisfaction of psychological needs, every individual strive for the satisfaction of other higher order needs. This striving of one or the other level of needs provides the motivation for the individual to learn. He believed learning as a process of bringing desired changes in the behavior of an individual 
for helping him to satisfy his one or other needs depending upon his individuality and interaction with his environment. He believes that nature and quality of learning depends upon the nature and quality of the needs of the learner. This theory ultimately aims to help the child is in his desire self-actualization. Educational implication of humanistic learning theories. It provides learning experience the children should be treated as a human beings having desires and wishes. Due care should be taken for the development of personal values like self-concept, self-expression, self-actualization. A child's learning behavior must be guided through incentric motive, that is, the satisfaction of his inner felt needs. Both price and punishment were rejected by Maslow simply on account of adverse effect in the proper development of the children. Teachers should pay due respect to the self of the children. Humanistic touch should be essentially given to the process of education and learning. Development of human potential and higher values of life should always be paid due consideration in any scheme of education and learning. Students may consult the following reference for further studies. Thank you.